Hey guys, uh, got another video for you. Uh, this time we're looking more into purple. Uh, I actually have good purple cards now, so um, yeah, I got a good deck. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to, so the weekly updates that I had been doing for my locals, uh, my locals now has two, we now have two locals a week on Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, I'm debating on whether or not to continue just for just the Sunday tournaments like I have been doing for my weekly update. Or uploading, you know, two videos a week for, you know, both updates and just, you know, being one long continuous stretch. Um, I think I am going to start over, though, with uh, my previous score in BT4. I think it was like 15 and 3 is what I went at my locals in total overall. That might have been including one BT5 tournament. I can't remember. Um, but I think I am going to start over with the uh, like the thumbnails and the... Um, the score points and everything like that. I may, I may continue that. I may not. But I think what I'm going to do is just start doing two, um, two like a buy, not a buy, like a twice a week update or what I'm playing, you know, just for my locals. Um, that being said, uh, like always, skip to the end if you want to see the video. This is what I played yesterday. Today is Thursday, the 26th at the time of recording this. We had our first Wednesday locals last night. Um, I did manage to win that going 3-0. Uh, there was also another person who went 3-0 as well as my locals locks only have three tournaments which are three rounds per tournament not four so there's not one undefeated um but it was me and uh i think it was i think he was playing mono yellow rookie rush or it was yellow green i think it was mario's list though from the regional he was testing um but yeah i managed to go 3-0 had two purple mirrors that took an hour <laughs> they were such long games they were so mentally taxing um and my third game was against imperial and uh, it was a really good game. I had three really good games, played against three really, really good players. All three games went to round three. Very close. Um, I can confidently say I don't think I misplayed too heavily. There were a couple moments where I did. I, th I think I had one just sh straight up bad misplay, and that was against Imperial when I didn't just hard play the Retaliation Devi to kill Imperial so he couldn't keep it rested. Um, I still ended up winning, but it was for other reasons. But that was about the only misplay I think that I made. Um, like you can see, I am playing purple. The uh, I do plan to stick with purple for a little while. I am going to Gen Con in a couple weeks uh, in September. And I'm trying to play whatever, you know, I want to play a really, really good deck. And as much as I hate to say, you know, I'm a red fanboy. I love red. But red is not going to, you know, bring home the gold. It sucks, I know. And it sucks that, you know, kind of feel like you're giving up on it. But red's just really not going to bring home the gold. It's not consistent enough. And it has some blatant issues that aren't, haven't been fixed yet. Um, so I'm going to go with purple. I'm not, I've not decided whether or not I want to play like the Gallantmon Rush variant or the Lilith Loop variant yet, but the, um, Lilith Loop seems to be the more consistent version, but there's just so many ways to play purple and so many different texts and so many different rookies and cards you can choose. Purple is really hard. Now I did go three and zero yesterday, but I hate this list. I think I bricked 80% of the time. 80% of the time, I did not pick up a good curve in my hand. And my very last game in round three, my opening hand was two Tamers, two Mega Digimon Fusions, and a level five. Very bad hand. Granted, I ended up being able to unbrick myself, get through the game, and, you know, end up winning in the end. Because purple is just super powerful once you get past, like, turn five or six. You have huge plays, and you can do, you know, such crazy board advantage things. Um... But I'll quit wasting your time. Uh, this is the deck listing. I already said this. But uh, skip to the end if you want to see it. If you want to see all my changes, uh, this is by no means a good list or a perfect list in any way. Uh, I do have many changes I do plan to implement with this list going into Sunday. Um, that being said, yeah, skip to the end if you want to see it. If you want to hear my thoughts, stick around. So we'll start off with the babies. I am playing four of the Demi Marimon and one of the, I believe it's pronounced Xiaomon. Um, Demi Marimon is just insanely good. He is like the best purple baby we have to date, for sure. No arguments there. And the one's Jamon for the retaliation. I am confident that I do think I'm going to cut the Jamon baby because if you open a brick and you flip over this baby or this egg, you can't unbrick yourself like how Demi Mara does. Like if you have a rookie in hand and you're missing fours, five, sixes, whatever it may be, you can just bring up, swing check a card you know advance what you're doing but if you brick and open jamon as your first baby you are in for a bad time and for that reason enough i think i am going to end up cutting it granted it is great when you see it as your third fourth egg and you get a good retaliation kill with a rookie that's great but that's not it doesn't happen often either you don't see it at all the whole game or you see it first or second egg and it's just not worth it. It's really just not worth it. So I am going to be cutting it. I don't know if I'll play a fifth egg in that slot. If I do, it'll be the Pogumon from the starter deck, the purple starter deck, the one that just mills two on deletion. 
I would only play that just to advance, you know, get into your deck some more, get some cards and discard for other effects. But I think at the current moment, just four Demi Maramon is probably the right answer. That's probably correct. Um, getting into rookies, I am playing four Tapiermon because Tapiermon is just a good card on the leash and draw a card. Because a lot of cards in the deck say that you don't get your on play effects when you play something from discard. So cards like, I believe it's, is it Labramon? I believe it's called the dog. Uh, she has on play draw one, trash one, and a lot of the times you don't get that effect. Granted, it's better if you have to just hard play Tapir or versus the Labra, but I feel like you can just abuse Tapir a little bit more, and he's just a hard draw one. You don't have to discard. So that's really, really good. Tapir's a really, really good card. Um, next is four Gilmon. I see some people play this at three. I think that'd be okay. There's a lot of techable rookies. Um, I do plan on changing my rookie lineup quite significantly. Uh, but Gilmon's insanely good. He's your combo. He is the main rookie with your combo because I am playing Chaos Gallant. And being able to play Chaos Gallant for three and kill a level five and revive your rookie back. So you basically just evolve for three and kill a level five. That's super, super, super good. And it's just really, really nice. And I think I like having Gilmon, especially when you can use Black War Growl Effect to play the Gilmon out um, from under him early and then going to chaos gallant kill you know your zeal if you were at three because that combo is just so so strong and that's where a lot of the merit to the deck is um another rookie that i was kind of testing is four of the gabumon the on on the on deletion inheritable draw two trash one really good you know get you a couple cards you can look through it you can you know really advances your board state i like seeing him early as your first evo most of the time you would prefer gilmon because Normally, your level 5 needs to be Black War Growl. You can bring him up, play the Gilmon, you know, do the shenanigans. But if not Gilmon, I think Gabumon is the second best target for your first on play. Or your first Digivolve on your baby on your first turn. Um, then I am playing two Gazimons. I think Gazimons really, really good. Um, I do think that he definitely warrants a spot at two. I don't think I played it less. Being able to keep him on the board and being able to recycle him pretty often is really, really important. Uh, especially against cards like Blinding Ray. Um, hammer sparks hitting jack rate in security he stops that that's really 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 good um, he really helps there's a lot of things that he can hit right now and I think Gazimon definitely wants to spot it too a card that I definitely am going to be putting in the deck though is this uh, Sukaimon the on deletion gain of memory I have become a believer in this card I don't know if you guys know who uh, Eli Hill is he um, I think it's ARG something like that I can't remember his YouTube but um, he played this Sukaimon in his little loop list, and I started like kind of investigating why. Turns out that this is actually super good. If you have this under a blocker and they're at zero and they attack and you block, it ends their turn. And that's really, really good. And I really want to test this. Maybe not at four, but I think I am going to slide two of these in for Gabu, for sure. Maybe take out one Gil, one Tapir for two of these. I don't I don't know where I'm going to go with that yet, but this card I definitely think warrants a spot, for sure. That's really cheeky, and I really like it. Um, going into the level fours, I have, let me try to dodge the glare here. The three Maramon, just the one cost Evo, hard play for five, super good card. Just doesn't do anything else. He's just a good card. He's just consistent. Um, four of the one cost blocker Devi, you play him at four because he is just your best one cost Evo early. He's a blocker that you can revive with Zwart. Just a lot of good targets. He's just a good card. Um, two Viamon, I do want to play more Viamon, and I plan to find a spot for more Viamon, for sure. Viamon's very important. Your 5k blockers get blown up by everything. Spiral Masquerade is ridiculous. <laughs> um, and then their 5k babies just die. If Devimon blocks it, he just dies. So you need your 6k blockers um, to dodge Shoutmon, Alter S, Nidhogg. There's just so many things that 5k hits that makes your 6k blockers so important yeah they're a two cost evo but that that doesn't matter when you can revive two vile mods off of zwart you're doing good you're doing really good um, my last two level fours are two of the retaliation devi i really like him if you kind of as you play purple more and more and learn to pilot the deck properly this, this card becomes way better because you actually learn when to play it in the proper times to remove things and you can gain a lot of value out of him by killing like megas and level fives and stuff um like I said, though, I definitely want more Vilemons in the deck. I I probably will end up cutting one Maramon for one more Vilemon, probably. That's probably where I'll go with that. That way we have just like a solid, you know, five and five, one cost and five, two costs. But mainly just because the value of Vilemon right now is just way too important, really. 
Um, going into level fives, I am playing four of the Black War Growlmon. Uh, he's just your best level five, I think. I'm not playing Lady Devi because in my testing, having to evolve into Lady Devi in raising feels bad. And a lot of times you evolve into your Black War Growl in raising because you're not at three on the turn you go into your level five. So it might just be a kind of like a playstyle choice, but not being able to get Lady Devi's effect when you evolve her really sucks. And when you got to push her out into battle area to use Lady Devi's effect, she's super susceptible to die, especially if you have to end your turn to play her. Granted, though, if you go to three on the turn you're going into your level five, you push her out, you go Lady Devi, draw two, you know, you see a ton of cards. She's really, really good. But I just think Black Horde Growl does more of what you want it to more consistently, and he's a lot safer to be able to just do it in breeding whenever you need to. Um, two Chimeramon, just because he's ridiculous, card's great, he just, he just beats players who don't know how to play around him, um, his effect in, in, um, uh, I forget the word I'm trying to say, his effect with Chaos Gallant, um, just creates so much removal that your opponent will get scared if you win round one, if you hit them with this, that they'll kind of play a lot more passively and not move their level fives up as often, kind of giving you a little bit of an advantage. And being able to play him off as a ward effect as well to remove something. And, you know, you can bring out a Chimera and a Gilmon, pop the Gilmon, kill level 5. You know, it's there's just so much you can do with him that makes him such a really, really good card. Um, three of the two-cost Skull Marimon. I really like my level 5 lineup. I don't think I'll change my level 5 lineup. Um, the two-cost Skull Marimon is really important because if you can't evolve into Black War Growl at 3, he's your next best option. Um... I like having him, especially on the turns that you are at three, and you go into a Marimond and Skull Marimond, you know, you can get all the way up the line, which is really, really good. It really, really sucks to have to evolve into Marimond. That's why you only play him at two. You don't want to see him that often, just enough to be able to abuse his effect. When you have to evolve into Marimond, you're not doing good. You're not having a good time, because you basically get nothing from that, and he's a three cost. And he doesn't even have a lot of DP either. So, yeah. But the, I do like my level five lineup. I think this is solid. I do have a couple Lady Devies that I did test, but... Like I said, they just don't, I don't know, I just don't like bringing my level 5 out of raising immediately. Especially when you're versing like a really, really close matchup. Because you don't want to be the first, you don't want to, whoever loses their mega first usually loses. Especially in like, like a really high level game. So, uh, next for the megas, I am playing 2 Tactimon and 4 Chaos Gallant. Um, a lot of purple players have been playing just like 5 megas. Some play 6 I like 7, I've toned it down to 6, but I really like 7, I don't like missing my Megas, and it sucks when you do. Um, I like this, I may play 3 Tacti, 3 Gallant, because Tacti is 3 Evo, and seeing Tacti early, like, seeing Tacti really, really early is like your first Mega is really good, unless they, you know, push it through level 5 and misplay, but... It really just depends. Another thing too is purple just auto loses to like rush decks. So I like Tactimon for a kind of like a pseudo kind of like block to that. You know, you can kill the rookies, you can increase your DP, gain some memory. It gives you a little bit more control over the game going into the mid game. Especially against like rookie rush strategies where they can't really kill him effectively. And that's, you know, that's kind of like why I like him. I may go one more Tacti over the, the, the fourth Chaos Gallant. Chaos Gallant kind of gets redundant when you have all four of them. And his, you really only ever get his pop effect once a game, maybe twice. So it's like, he's not really super needed. And sometimes in the late game, you would rather have the three cost Evo than the four cost Evo because you don't have a body. So you have to end your turn, which really sucks. But, eh. I, I tried Anubismon last week. That's why, let's see. So this past Sunday, yeah, this past Sunday, I played Anubis with Cast Gallant. And I liked it, but it wasn't great. Definitely wasn't great. Anubis doesn't feel good. Especially when you have to evolve Nubis with no discard, and he really sucks. Because that's your first Mega, it really, really sucks. Um, yeah, that's why I ended up cutting him. And with Anubis, you had an Abysmal Rookie Rush matchup, and Green OTK, and Imperial. You just gotta have some techs for these fast decks. Um, as far as Zwartz go, I'm only playing three Zwartz. I tested it at four. Four is way too much. You could honestly argue playing this at two. You only ever need to see him once or twice a game. If you play him a third time in a game, you've won the game. Simple. He's too powerful to not to lose a game if, if, after you play him a third time. Um, nine times out of ten, you just play it once. One's wart, and usually you either create enough board advantage to win, or you just can't win. So, But yeah, I like three. Four was way too many. Two's a little sketchy. You might not see it. It might be security. You know, might lose them because you have to mill. But three feels great. Um, two Mega Digimon Fusion. I see it plenty at two. I uh, look, it feels great. I uh, see it all the time. 
It bricks my hands like crazy at two. Can't play it at one, though, because then you'll never see it. But two's good. Three's way too many. I see some people playing it at three. Three's just too much. In Little Floop, three would be okay, because you can play the game, the memory, and things like that. But two's enough for this deck, for sure. Don't play three. Um, next, I'll get into my Tamers. I was recently enlightened by something. Um, I'm playing the one purple Matt Ishida because I felt like one memory tamer was pretty good. But I was recently enlightened by the fact that you don't need the memory tamer to be purple in this deck because it doesn't matter. You don't play any purple options, right? So a lot of the time what happens is when you play Matt, you add a card from discard that you don't really need. Especially in this deck, you don't really need anything from the discard. So someone that I saw, the, the Jawashan tournament yesterday, the little flute player that got second place, made a comment that if you want to play a memory tamer, just play Izzy, fix your top deck, right? That made a lot of sense to me. I really liked that, and that seems like the move. This is definitely going to be an Izzy, for sure. I just think that's better. It, it, it is. It's just better. Because I, I don't know how many times I had this mat early and just played it for nothing. Got nothing out of my discard. Literally no value. Just played it just because it was a memory tamer. And imagine how much better Izzy would have been in that situation. And even late game, adding something back is mediocre. It's just one card. Yeah, you might be able to get back a four if you're whiffing fours. Or a rookie if you're missing a rookie. Or a mega. Whatever it may be. But like, it's just not enough. And I think being able to fix your top deck and to know what's coming from your top deck with Izzy... Is pretty good. I really like that thought process, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Uh, I played two Takumis, uh, mostly because I wanted to play two Takumis, two Takumis, just to have four cards that can at least assist me in the Rookie Rush matchup, because there's a lot of Rookie Rush at my locals now. Uh, people figured out the decks is good, and we have a, uh, a black-yellow Rookie Rush, a purple-yellow Security Digimon Rookie Rush, and then we have just like a straight-up yellow-green Rookie Rush, and it's Definitely need text for Rookie Rush for sure. Rookie Rush is starting to show itself in these tournaments to be a very good deck. Cause, I mean, it is. It's a very good deck. It's absolutely a 2-1 deck for sure. Um, and then my last two cards are the, the Tyne Mat, the White Tyne Mat, because you want all your targets for Mega Digimon Fusion. Um, that being said, I may actually end up cutting this mat for another Takumi. I'm going to test the Izzy in the slot just to see if I like it. Because if you have the Tyne Mat alongside the Matty Ishida, you know, you get to start your turn at 5 most of the time, which is great. But, I mean, these Tamers are good enough to basically start your turn at 3, right? I mean, if your opponent is passing your turn at 1 and they don't have a Mega, you know, you're technically in the driver's seat, right? Like, you, you, if they're playing around your Tamer, you're doing well. So, I mean, that's the power of the Tyne Mat card. This will probably end up being a third Takumi just because I love... The ability to play something for a two cost like if you're at two and you have a mega on board you go to kumi mega digimon fusion you know pop off you can't do that with this card because it's four cost um but yeah you really like takumi i'm probably going to end up playing three takumi three tactics just to have as many options as possible against rookie rush it's kind of where i'm at with it i'm definitely going to be taking in the uh the sukaimon to gain the memory off the blockers for sure um a little four lineup. I am going to take out one Marimon for one Vilemon. I'm taking out Xiaomon. So I got a lot of changes coming through. Um, I know this is a bit of a longer video, but I really appreciate you guys. I think I'm at 83 subscribers now. Um, every day I look, you know, we're just one or two people closer to 100. That's really cool. Um, I just started the channel just to keep up with my own deck list because I love the game so much. And just to just kind of keep up with everything and, you know, be able to go back and watch and see where I'm at. But I really do appreciate you guys. If I get to 100, I'll, I'll do something, send somebody something. I don't know. We'll do a giveaway or something. I don't know. But I really do appreciate you guys once again. Have a great day. Peace.